everyone and welcome to Finger Food Miniatures. Today we're going to be making this really cute and simple basic bunt cake with these really cute and easy to make little flowers and leaves on top. And I hope that you enjoy watching me make this and I hope that you guys learn some new tricks. And I'd love to see it if you guys made your own little bunt cake. So if you would like to Instagram me your little creations, please do. I am art by Karen E. Haley on Instagram and all you have to do is comment at art by Karen E. Haley in your post and I will get to see it and that will be really cool because I love to see when people make stuff based on my tutorials. Anyway, this is a really fun and easy project so let's get started. In last Monday's video, um, the imaginative artist suggested that we do the bunt cake and so thank you so much for suggesting a video. I would love to hear what your guys' suggestions on future videos would be. I love to do cakes, but I'm also great at doing food and I'm willing to dabble in furniture as well. So let's get on with the tutorial. I'm so excited because it's so much fun to make these little cakes. All right, I rolled my sheet of clay out on my pasta machine. I used the number one setting. And now I'm going to stack this up and cut my cake out of it. For a total of seven layers on the number one setting on my pasta machine, and I am going to squeeze them together just a little bit to ensure that they are going to stay together. And now I'm going to use my cookie cutter to cut out the shape. To make the center of our bundt cake, we're going to poke our hole down the middle of it, and I'm using this medium-sized ball head um, tool and we're going to center it right in the middle stand above it and look down and press through the cake it's going to divot kind of when you push through and that's what I like about the ball tool um, as opposed to using a straw because the ball tool is pushing clay through as opposed to taking clay out and that will give it that um, indented shape that a bundt cake really has. Now we are going to have this raw edge and what I'm going to do is just smooth that with the ball, ball head. I'm going to transfer it to my little metal disc so that I can work on it without putting a bunch of fingerprints all over it and smushing my texture that I'm making. And it's going to stay on there nice and um, securely. Now we're going to enhance that uh, texture here, the ridged texture, and bring it all the way in. So what I'm going to do is take the edge of this ball tool here, and I'm going to lean it against the cake so that it makes an indentation. And I'm going to do that for all of these little ridges here. Okay, and it looks kind of rough right now, but don't worry, we will be in cleaning that up later. I'm going to start going from the center out and lining up the tool with the ridges that we made on the outside. We're going to want to bring that all the way down through the middle. Now I'm using the silicone end of this medium ball tool, which is a nice flat spatula kind of shape, and I'm going to just smooth all of these harsh edges that were made by the ball tool when we sculpted the ridges. As you work, hold your cake sideways and you can kind of see if there's any unevenness to the top of the cake and you can adjust it as such so that it's all flush with each other. One thing that I am doing is I am pushing down the edges of all of these with this little spatula tool and I'm making them angle inwards so that the ridge peaks at the center of the cake rather than towards the outer edge. Because the a real bunt cake has a nice arch to it, it doesn't come up straight on the outside and then and then curve in, it comes up and curves in nice and gradually. Now I'm deepening the ridges on the side by pushing, pushing the edge of this um, silicone tool down along each ridge and then smoothing. All right, now we're ready to texture. As you can see, it's still a little rough, but the texturing will tend to even things out and um, hide a lot of the imperfections from sculpting with the ball tool and the silicone tool. So I'm going to take my little uh, stippling um, 
st uh, stencil brush and I'm going to just tap it lightly all over. Because this is such a small brush, I can get into these cracks really nice and easily. And again, I really recommend a small brush like this, especially for texturing. Now I'm going to start to bake the cake <laughs> in a way. I'm going to color it with my pastels to make the outer surface look like it's been baked in an oven. So I'm going to mix my pastels over here on this piece of foil. All right, we've got it all pasteled up. We've got the nice baked look to it, but it did take away some of our texture because um, brushing across the clay can sometimes smooth it out a little bit. So I'm going to add a little more texture just to bring that look back, make it look nice and cakey and crumbly and delicious. To make our cute little flowers, we're just gonna need some pink clay going to roll it into a long kind of thin snake and we're going to cut this up into even little pieces so that I can make little tiny balls out of them and I'm going to use my exacto knife here. We're going to roll these into teeny tiny little balls right here in the palm of our hands there. Okay, so we're going to make some of these cute little teeny tiny flowers. These are a like beginner's level flower, so they're really easy to make. All you do is you take a ball tool. Uh, I'm using the larger end of this double-ended ball tool um, just because it's, it sticks on to the bigger one a little tiny bit better. And so I'm going to stick one of those balls on the end of my ball tool, line it up so that it's vertical. And I'm going to take my needle tool and mark off little petals at even intervals. I'll try to get five or six on each of my little flowers. Now at this point it's good to stop and hold your tool vertical so you can see how many petals there are on there. I've got four on there so far. So I'm going to add one more right here. And now I'm going to take this flower off of this ball tool. Alright, and that's what it looks like so far, but I want it to be a little flatter like these flowers. So what I'm going to do is take my medium ball tool, the one that we poked the hole in the middle of the clay cake with, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of cornstarch on the end of this, press that little flower down with the end of this tool, and the cornstarch just makes it easier to remove the flower from the ball tool. And we turn it over and it's this cute teeny tiny little flower and these are really easy to make uh, a lot of because they don't require hand sculpting every petal or um, anything too extraneous so these are great for making a cake that's going to have a lot of flowers in a little grouping um, just like this cake will have so I'm going to continue to make these and then we'll move on to our little vines and leaves all right, so I took a little bit of this, um, a little bit of this yellow, this is Sculpey 3 Lemonade, and this green is just Bake Shop Green, and then I also used some white, and I'm just mixing together these colors, and I'm conditioning them in my hands until they're really 
until it's like a really sticky consistency because I'm going to be making leaves that look like they've been piped and you're going to want to be able to pull the clay until it makes this really thin fine point and we're not quite there yet so we have to keep working with this clay until it's really really warm the warmer it is the more um, elastic it will be and more uh, sticky the consistency will be and I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch on the tips of my fingers just because it will keep this clay from sticking to my fingers too much and what I'm gonna do is roll it really thin here and take a little pinch and pull all right and I'm gonna pinch that just a little bit with my fingers and we'll have a bunch of little teeny tiny leaves take just a little piece of this green and I'm going to roll it on this piece of acrylic that I have here. The, thing, the thickness I want my strings to be are about this thick, very, very thin little strings for my vines. So I'm going to set these leaves aside and I'm going to bring my cake back up here. And now I'm going to start frosting it with our thick TLS solid sculpey mixture. I almost, I almost forgot, um, before I do that, I want to cut the slice from my cake because it's easier to cut the slice before putting this stuff on, otherwise it will smear all over the interior of the cake. So I'm going to cut out a slice and it comes right out and you can see that the baked outer layer really shows up nicely when you slice these cakes. And now it's time to texture these, so I'm going to stick this back down on the surface of my little metal tray and I'm going to use my needle tool to texture the interior of the cake and this slice and I'm also going to be using my small stippling brush. Now we're going to apply this thick frosting to our cake and I'm using this same tool that I mixed the frosting with and I'm just going to kind of in a swirling motion apply it because I want it to give it nice texture. Um, I'm not going to frost the entire cake of course we're just going to frost along the top because I want to be able to see that nice um, baked look that we gave the cake. So we're just going to frost along the very top around the crown of the cake and then we're going to apply our flowers and leaves. Now we're going to put our vines on. Um, for this I'm just going to pick this up with my needle tool. I'm going to go in small pieces. And with that, we're done sculpting our little clay cake, adding all of the little decorations. And now it's time to bake the cake. Again, I hope you really enjoyed that project. I know I did. I had a lot of fun making this little guy for you guys. And uh, all you need to do to finish it up is spray it with some sealant and um, you're done. Now I have mine here with some little tables and chairs that my grandma gave me. I did not make these, but I did make the little plants. So if you'd like to see a plant tutorial in a future video, please let me know. And again, if you'd like to Instagram these to me, um, if you make your own, please do. Again, my Instagram is at artbykarenehaley. 
and I hope to see you guys next week.